Welcome to The Portfolio Life. I'm Jeff Goins. And in this episode, we're going to do something different. Usually, I do an interview or some kind of topical discussion. And with this episode, we're going to do something unique. And if it works, we'll do more of it. And if not, we won't do it again. I am going to read for you an essay that I wrote which is actually an excerpt from my upcoming book, The Art of Work. I haven't shared anything really about this book yet, so this will be an opportunity for you to get a first glance at something that might go in the book. When you write a book, there are all these leftover pieces and things that you pull out and put back in, and this essay is one of those pieces. It works pretty good as a standalone piece. Who knows if it'll actually end up in the book? So, We're going to just roll with it, and it'll be a shorter form episode. And let me know what you think of it on the blog at goinswriter.com or on uh, iTunes or Stitcher or whatever you're using to listen to it. I'd love a review. Here is what I call the legacy of an artist. Ernest Hemingway died believing he had not created his life's work, lamenting to a friend that everything he wanted to do He hadn't done. Beloved by the world, he died a lonely, depressed man. Every artist faces the ultimate insufficiency of her work. Every worker, I think, if he or she is wise, knows the limits of his labor. So what good, then, is it to pursue a calling or a vocation if it's going to end up in disappointment? Well, I think if we look at another author, we see a very different lesson learned from his work. During the Second World War, British author J.R.R. Tolkien, who would go on to write one of the greatest fantasy novels of the 20th century, The Lord of the Rings, was contemplating death. Would he live through such turbulent times or die in the middle of completing his life's work? He didn't know, and the possibility of not completing such a task haunted him. It took years for Tolkien just to figure out the different languages that they would be using in this novel that he was writing. And so to process his fear of dying before the whole thing was complete, before people could understand the message and the story, Tolkien wrote a short story about a man named Niggle. Niggle was an artist who was always getting distracted from his work. Neighbors and friends would ask favors of him constantly, and as he neared the date for his long, quote, journey, which was a metaphor for death, he worried he might never finish his greatest work, which was a painting of a tree. And so constantly, Niggle was working on this painting, and, and people would come over and ask him for favors. One time, a neighbor asked him to drive his wife to the doctor because she was so sick that she was going to die, and Niggle would do this, but he was also frustrated because it was pulling him away from what he thought was his most important work. So he was afraid that just like Hemingway or Tolkien, that he was going to die without having completed his best work. So when it came time for this departure, Niggle looked at his painting, and as he feared, he saw an unfinished work. Uh, He had focused too much on the leaf of this tree, and he had started to do the tree, but it wasn't complete. And so there were just a a few details that he had made, and and the rest of it was um, still waiting to be completed. The majority of the painting he hoped would someday be complete never happened. I think we can all relate to such regret. The pain of leaving some projects undone, fearing we will never return to them. But there's an interesting twist at the end of Tolkien's story. When Niggle completes his journey, essentially entering the afterlife, he sees something he just can't believe. Sitting there in all the glory he imagined is the tree he never finished. Everyone, I believe, fears what Hemingway feared, that they'll die with important work still to do. We all die unfinished symphonies, one of my friends told me once over breakfast. He was telling me about his dad, who on his deathbed made a half-hearted attempt to repent for his life of alcoholism and neglect. It wasn't enough for my friend, nor should it have been, but he realized that he had to let it go. He had to be okay with a lack of resolution, at least in this life. Niggle learned the same thing. When it comes to your work, there will be things you won't accomplish. 
This is the work of an artist, and I think we're all creating art in our own ways. Bravely stepping into a creative field with bold aspirations while recognizing that the work will never truly be finished. This is your job. Art is never finished, Leonardo da Vinci once said, only abandoned. The challenge for the artist, and as I said, we're all creating art on the canvas of our lives, is to do our work well while letting go of those expectations of results. If we don't do this, we may very well drive ourselves and those around us crazy. It may even, as in the case of Hemingway, kill us. And that's the real tragedy. Not that we leave this world with work we still wish were possible, but that the work robs us of the life we could have lived. The right choice isn't to retire, to simply settle in and invite death. It's to work hard and passionately, but acknowledge the limitations of what one life is capable of. One more story. Albert Einstein, on his deathbed, asked for his glasses so that he could continue working on a project he believed would be his greatest work of all. He wasn't interested in mere phenomena anymore, he said. He wanted, as he put it, to know God's thoughts. Everything else, according to him, was just details. This, quote, theory of everything, unquote, as it came to be known, was based on Einstein's belief that physics was an expression of the divine. He believed there was an explanation for everything, that God did not create chaos, but order. And he spent 30 years on this project, working on it until the very last day of his life. The theory of everything was what some people believed to be a predecessor to string theory. Though unfinished at the time of his death, Einstein's final work is still fascinating today, inspiring awe amongst some of the world's most notable physicists, but it never got completed. It was never finished. Einstein died with perhaps his greatest work unfinished. And so what we learn from these three men, I think, is that a healthy fear of death drives a person to continue creating until the very end, which is a good thing. But with that fear comes the acceptance that even your life's work will in some way ultimately remain unfinished. So why is this? And what do we do with this reality? It's kind of humbling. Well, I think the answer is legacy. Perhaps one of my proudest achievements in life is that I was part of the very first honor code at my college. Founded in 1843, Illinois College had never had an official honor code, which is like a formal document of ethics and academic performance. Such documents are popular in most Ivy League schools, but our small liberal arts school lacked one. So having done sufficient research on the topic after professor proposed the idea to the student body government, I realized why our school had never had an honor code. It wasn't for lack of trying. One faculty member gave me a list of students who had attempted to initiate the very thing I was in charge of, and I followed up with each of them. One was a woman who had tried to create a student honor code over a decade before my attempt. I emailed her asking for context, and she told me essentially that it never happened because there was just too much red tape. But to me, that kind of sounded like a dare. So for the next year and a half, my friend Dan and I endeavored to do what this young woman didn't, perhaps couldn't do. Little did I know how right she was. After drafting dozens of versions of the document, constantly having to change things to appease students, faculty, and staff, I was ready to give up. There was no way to please everyone. And without being able to do that, I was confident we wouldn't be able to garner enough support to pass the document. Still, we tried. We lobbied the student body, wrote articles in the school newspaper, and met with any professor or administrator who would listen. And on the last day of classes during our senior year, we submitted our proposal to the faculty for a vote. If there was a majority vote, the honor code would be instituted. Waiting outside the lecture hall after delivering an impassioned speech about why we need such a document, I tried to listen to what the results of the vote were. A minute later, the meeting was adjourned and a hundred professors exited the hall. As one economics professor who had been a proponent of the code passed me, he turned around and not so discreetly winked at me. I sighed. We had done it, but the work was far from over. All we had done was take a theory and make it official. Now the code had to be enacted. Committees would have to be formed and processes would have to be tested. I had no choice but to pass the baton to another student, 
a sophomore named Josh who was passionate about our school and respecting the honorable tradition on which it was founded. I may have been one of the champions for the honor code, but Josh and his classmates made it a reality. And so this is the lesson that I'm trying to convey here. It's that in any endeavor, you will come to the end of yourself, whether that means facing your own mortality or coming to grips with a limited amount of resources you have. And at a certain point, you will either abandon the work, as Leonardo da Vinci said, giving up in despair of ever accomplishing such a feat, or you just might find a way to pass it on. And so what I learned and what you might learn through this experience of passing meaningful work on to somebody else of essentially creating a legacy is this. When we share our life's work, we not only help ourselves realize our calling, but we help other people do the same thing. And that just might be the most important legacy we leave. Not the work that we do, but the work that's left undone for others to carry on in our absence. So here's my challenge to you as you're thinking about this and thinking about your own portfolio life and the contributions of work that you're making to the world. Don't just be thinking about the stuff that you can accomplish today or this week or this year, or even in this lifetime, but be thinking about work that is so much bigger than you that you will have to invite others into the process and at a certain point, pass it on to them. What more could we really hope for? So that's the essay. Uh, again, it's called The Legacy of an Artist, and it's an excerpt from my upcoming book. I'm sure it'll change a lot. It might not be included in the book at all, in which case this will be like a limited edition rare thing, you know, that you can download the MP3 and sell to your friends for 25 cents. But tell me what you think about it. Uh, again, um, my name is Jeff, and this is The Portfolio Life. You can tell me what you think about it at my blog at goingswriter.com or leave a review on iTunes. Sure makes me feel better about the way I'm spending my time. Thanks and have a good one. 